Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix. For us in the Mainframe Enthusiast community, one of the things that is most satisfying is when we do something on the Mainframe, compile a program in COBOL or PL1 or, or an assembler job, and then get a beautiful listing out that tells us exactly what happened. And, uh, and of course, the listings on the mainframe are very important because uh, even though, yes, we do have a, a, an interactive terminal session through TSO and MVS or with VM370, of course, uh, the compilation produces so much output that is important to look at that the listing is almost like a required reading. And yes, you could look at it in the spool, um, you can look at it on the terminal, but when you get a listing out and you see exactly what happened, there is uh, there is so much information there that it's really useful to look at it. And there's also tradition uh, with the listings on the mainframe because uh, in the early days of the mainframe, programmers would submit a, a stack of, uh, of punch cards to the data center, then they would process it, and then uh, sometime later, it could be minutes or uh, usually half an hour or an hour later or sometimes even a day later if it was a college or something and then they could they would get a listing back which would tell them what happened and so the listing is very important in the mainframe community and of course uh, with our beloved TK4 and with uh, VM370 with the community edition now we have of course a possibility to print out to either a file or by piping it into some kind of a printing solution however I've always uh, I've always been um, less than happy with the solutions we have out there and, I've, and I have tried all of them and I think that the, it boils down for me that um, they never were really quite um, the way it used to be back in the 80s or so when when I was printing out to uh, real 1403 printers uh, and so over the years I went and acquired the font on the license and uh, and tried all the various uh, uh, ways to print so that it would look uh, as original as possible. However, what you're seeing here now is the one solution that has come closest to what uh, having a printout on green bar would look like from the 80s. And I have lots of samples that I've collected here at home over the last uh, five, six years from people from people have sent me their listings. And so um, this is how it used to look back then. You have all the uh, lines being counted here on the right side as you can see uh, the page were being count the page numbers were being uh, shown you had some branding uh, you had whole aligning artifacts here so that the printer operator could uh, align the paper correctly on the 1403 printer of course the font um, is correct and uh, we've had already lots of discussions on this channel about the 1403 font very special font only uppercase obviously um, and and so uh, today I'm going to present how we're going to how it's going to be possible for all of us, everybody in the mainframe enthusiast community, to obtain free listings delivered to the email box um, every time they execute a the job within seconds, and get this exact quality, high quality of uh, of uh, 1403 listing delivered to them. Uh, as you can see here, that's uh, that's how it looks like if I make it as big as as possible on the on the screen uh, this is just an example mvs job where i ran a the view chess uh, chess program from the early, late 70s and early 80s which was uh, one of the uh, best uh, chess programs out there in that time uh, came out second uh, in the jerusalem chess competition i think 1977 if i'm not mistaken but i could be wrong and uh, and here it's a it's uh, it was calculating a chess uh, problem and came out with a solution after thinking about it for uh, I think this executed in about mm, yeah 17 minutes so uh, on a very fast uh, i7 machine running the Hercules emulator and of course uh, TK4 MBS and so um, in this sh in this video today we're going to look at how to obtain beautiful listings like this delivered from your beloved TK4 uh, or VM370 system every time you print out to the printer so what we are announcing today, and i get in a minute to who we is, um, what we're announcing today is a free service for the um, enthusiast community out there, mainframe enthusiast community, uh, to set up very simply and uh, a way to have your emulated mainframe 
print out to a small agent which we provide either in source code or in binary for your favorite operating system and that will then forward it to this service at 1403.bitnet.systems this is the uh, address and if you have set up an account there and validated by uh, clicking on the validation uh, link that you will be sent the first time you sign up and then you'll get the agent so that you can connect it to your emulator we're going to show all of this here on the uh, on, on this uh, video. Uh, getting back to again, who is we? Uh, the service is being offered by Matthew Wilson, who wrote uh, the software, and by me, who's uh, offering the service uh, for free to the community at large. And also, I bought the uh, license for the uh, 1403 uh, uh, font to, that we use for generating the listings, uh, that, which are, are being sent to you as PDFs. So I'm creating here an account with a bogus email address that doesn't exist, um, which then uh, gets us to this screen, which means that we're gonna get uh, uh, a verification email, which we click on. And once we clicked on it, then that address is verified. So, um, and then you can just log in with that password you just created and, uh, and with the email address. So uh, once we do that, so I clicked on the verification email. Once we log in again, at this point, we should be here. So now what happened here? So we get now our account. It says that um, this is our email address, which is fake. Uh, the, you know, there's, um, there's nothing there. And uh, it's just for the purposes of this video. And then it says that we are not subject to any quotas on this system. Um, means we can print as much as we want, but uh, that's just for uh, um, special users. Everybody else will be on a quota of uh, 25 print jobs per day. And uh, so far I've printed zero jobs with zero pages. Uh, now, what's important is this access key. We're gonna get an API key or an access key, which we need to put in the, into the configuration file uh, that connects uh, to our uh, emulated mainframe. And I'll show all that in this video. It's very simple. It's already pre-formatted here. We just take this and we put it uh, in the system where we want to connect to. This sounds very difficult, but it's very, very simple. I'll show this all. So if we need to change the, general, the access key, we can just click on this yellow button here. And uh, and so uh, will, this will change the, the key here, the API key. We can, of course, change our password. Uh, and we see here our most uh, recent uh, um, jobs. Now, what's important here is that, so we need two things. We need this. Uh, configuration file which we need to call config.yaml and then we need to select an agent for our platform since I'm going to do this all on Windows um, let's go grab an agent for Windows it has assets here so um, we can either take the source code and go and compile it and uh, I will I will towards the end of the video we'll talk much more about how amazing the system is that Matthew Wilson has uh, created here but let's take the Windows um, binary. It tells me it could be dangerous, but I know it's not. So, um, so we downloaded this and let's open it up. And all it is here is just a, a Windows uh, binary. So let me put this uh, somewhere here on my desktop. And um, so, and that's for now, that's all we need to do. And this is our page. And now all we need to do is start up uh, TK4 and uh, and connect it with the agent that we just downloaded for Windows. And of course, if you're a Mac OS, you will download the Mac OS version. Or if you're in Linux, you do this on, Win on Linux. So let's get to the next step. Okay, so I am now uh, on a Windows command terminal. I could just as well uh, use this one, um, but I don't like that very much, so I just installed one called Termius, but whatever, you can do it for anywhere. And this is a virgin copy of TK4, uh, MVS. I'm not gonna get into where to obtain it from and how to install it because uh, I assume you all wanna print um, because you have it already running. So uh, the first thing is always to go to unattended and set console mode. Um, Set console mode that 
Oh, um, I'm coming from Linux, so there's no need to set the path. Okay, so we are now in console mode and we just start MVS by typing MVS. Uh, and here it is. So we have the um, Hercules console and this is all coming up. And so you will see here, we have a printer called 000E. Um, so that's the traditional address for the 1403 printer. This would also work, by the way, everything that I'm saying would also work with the 3211 printer, but I prefer to use the 1403 printer because that's a class A printer in MVS. And we're gonna talk about VM370 a little bit towards the end, but uh, let's just stick with MVS here for the purposes of this video. So as you can see here, this wants to print to a directory called print, uh, PRT slash PRT00. E dot text. So this, uh, if you print to class A in this MVS, it will automatically go to this file and just in append mode, it just keeps on appending as if it was a virtual printer. We want, now what we're gonna do here is connect to this address with the agent we just downloaded. And instead of printing to this file, it will print to this agent. The agent has the API key, will forward to, to uh, the web server that I just showed you, 1403.bitnet.systems. It knows your uh, email address from the API key and within seconds, it will send you a beautiful attachment an email with the attachment of the listing. We're gonna see all this happening now. So, um, uh, looks like we have MBS already running. So, yep, TSO is up, as you can see here. Let's connect to it. All righty, here's our trusted terminal. I log in, um, erc01, see you later is the default password. And yeah, I can now go to, um, let's, oops. Um, sys2.jclib sys2.jclib and let's take a COBOL job okay and if we submit this with class A we know this will go to this printer here um, so this will go to this file. Let's see if this if that is really what's going on. Um, where is my terminal here? Okay, so let's submit this. As delivered in the standard, I didn't change a single thing other than the uh, job name. Okay, that's done. And um, we could now go and uh, open that file and we will see that it, it was attached here to this thing. Uh, however, from now on, we want it to be emailed to us, or at least for the duration of this run. So what we do here is we say dev init 00e, because that's the address of this printer. Again, this address here, right? So dev init, that's a Hercules command. That's not an MVS command. Uh, 000, 000e, we say localhost. Mm, let's choose as port number 1403, sock dev. Um, so by specifying that we said we want to change the configuration of the of the device 000e to Hercules, not to MVS. M MVS doesn't know what's going on here. And we say that at the internet address we want to use is localhost and port number 1403 and that this is a socket device. So we do that and it says here uh, device initialized and if we press escape, we see here now it doesn't go to printer like this one. 002 still goes to a uh, file. This goes now to a socket device, okay? And what we need to do now is connect the agent to the socket device. That's what we're gonna do here in a second. So we're gonna go here and um, you remember that I just downloaded here uh, this virt virtual 03 1403 exe file. However, before I start it, I need to give it the configuration file. So that is still here. Um, if you remember, we have this pre-configured for us. We can just copy and paste it. And so we say, we go to the, I always, I like to put it in the, in the same directory where the emulated mainframe is running. So I say, uh, edit config yaml. Um, what is the name of the editor in DOS? I don't remember. <laughs> There's no VI. Um, well, I have to do it from the from the um, 
from the Windows uh, interface just a second. So I'm creating here a config YAML file. Uh, I'm opening it and copy pasting it exactly what we took from from here. So this is exactly this. Um, okay. So now we save it. And that's it. That's all the configuration that's needed. It's just copy and paste. So now we can go back here and we, okay. So now it's probably configured to 118 bytes. And now we can start, um, well, what we can do is copy virtual uh, here. So now we have it in the same directory. And now we can just start virtual exit. As you can see here, virtual uh, 1403 by copyright by Matthew Wilson. And uh, it says it's successfully connected to our, um, to our uh, Hercules here. And we also see here that it connected. So now let's see what happens if we, um, if we print something from the terminal. So let's go here and um, let's pick up the same file here. And as you can see, receiving job to online API, print API response status 200K, which means the web server 1403.bitnet.systems received it and emailed it to us. And once we email it, um, we're gonna get a file in our, um, in our uh, email box that will look like this uh, just a second so this is of course the quality we will, which we saw at the very beginning and the email that you're going to receive is going to look like this so you'll see something like this in your uh, in your inbox saying virtual 1403 printout and it says that it came from printer at 1403 but uh, systems. Uh, via SendGrid and um, what I do is I add this to my contact so it will not end up in spam and then she says the intern in the machine room has carefully collated your job and prepared it for delivery as it used to be in the data centers back in the 70s 80s and 90s please find it attached to this message the phone use is attached uh, to the attached PDF is a 1403 vintage mono from Slanted Hall on the license and and then you have your uh, your PDF which you can open up in in the browser itself or any uh, any PDF viewer that you'd like to have and of course um, this all works whether you're using Windows like I did here um, well, I'm making a little bit of a fool of myself because I'm not very good with Windows or whether you use MVS uh, on Linux or Mac OS or even on a Raspberry so all those agents exist for all those versions even uh, at the version of uh, for Mac OS for M for the uh, ARM architecture is provided. So that's how uh, this looks like one, once you receive the email. And as I said, uh, it really depends a little bit on um, uh, how many, what the kind of, what kind of quarter you have. So um, I've printed, and you can see here now, it says already I have a job that I printed. Um, and over time, I'll see all the jobs that I've printed. Uh, if I have a quarter, it will tell me about the quarter. Uh, you're allowed 25 jobs and 1,000 pages uh, within 24 hours. So we don't want to avoid people uh, spamming the system, but um, accounts with the print, job, print jobs in the previous six months will be deleted. So if you're not running this for six months, the account will be deleted, so you don't have to worry about keeping accounts in all the various places. So if you're not using it, you'll be automatically deleted, which is, I think, desirable. And um, and so, yeah, so you see here the jobs and you have it in your email box. If you generate a new access key, then of course you will have to go change the YAML file we just created. Now, this, as I mentioned, works for both um, uh, this works uh, and you need to, of course to keep this running in parallel so what i do on linux is i have a tmux session one with hercules and one with uh, with virtual 03 1403 printer running and in the background and um, as long as you keep this running like this uh, it's not going to disconnect it's just going to listen for jobs it separates the jobs automatically it knows how to separate vm370 it knows how to separate mvs and later versions of those operating systems so uh, this is very uh, reliable. I've printed uh, 
over uh, 15,000 pages myself this way in hundreds of jobs and it's uh, very scalable and uh, yeah there is a cost associated with providing the service which I am footing for the time being and um, and uh, yeah you just all you have to do is sign up get the config yaml file get the agent that you desire and uh, and connect it the way I said so the command of course is dev in it this one here um, this one I'll highlight it again and I'll put it also in the description below this video dev in it zero zero the address of the printer you want to connect to localhost and then any port as long as you put the same port in the config yaml file it will connect it, it's really very simple and then you get beautiful amazing output within seconds delivered to your inbox uh, from the moment you hit the uh, submit um, uh, command on your emulator. This also works, as I said, for VM370 CE just the same. Of course, I'm not going to go into the commands on VM370 to print. We're making this available to you for free. Now let's look a little bit how um, how uh, Matthew Wilson programmed this because I think it's quite an amazing uh, system. First of all, this is all free software, so it's a repository on uh, Matthew's uh, GitHub. Racing Mars is his. Um, nickname there racing mars slash virtual 03 and as you can see it's um it's split between the web server so you could actually run if you download this and get your own license for a 1403 print uh, printer font you could run this yourself on your own server um so there's no need to just go through us and you're absolutely free to run your own service and then it's split between the web server that um that you just saw and we also have the virtual printer, uh, which is this part here, um, that um, that takes the um, that takes the output from the mainframe, uh, recognizes uh, end of a job, um, does the job splitting and various other things, and f and then applies, of course, the nice PDF formatting to it, and uh, and then emails it to you. So all this is uh, is part of it. Uh, here it is, agent, and uh, we can look at it. It's all written in Go, obviously, and um, of course it needs to know the Hercules address, um, the access key that's all supplied by the YAML file. And uh, as you can see here, once it opens up, it tries to open up that file, and uh, it validates the configuration that it, it can use it. And uh, and then it connects to the printer and listens. And once there is output coming in, it needs to find out when that job has finished. And there's various ways to do that. It's uh, uh, it's not terribly complicated, but it, it's it's also not that simple. So also uh, the various operating systems for the mainframe handle job output in a completely different way. Uh, VM37 is completely different than MBS, but I believe that um, Matthew is going to make a video about how he created all this, and uh, so I'll ref I'll defer it to him to explain to us what's going on. I just want to say that uh, I'm amazed at the at the beautiful code that Matthew has created. It's clean, it's beautiful, it's elegant, it's uh, it's safe code, and uh, I I'm certainly an admirer of uh, uh, everything that uh, Matthew has really written for the mainframe community as well as uh, his, um, his videos on open vms and uh, mvs sysgens uh, has done really amazing work i think he's probably uh, him and uh, and rene ferlon probably the two best uh, youtubers out there when it comes to um, when it comes to mainframes and and vax so um this is it uh, within uh, I've I stretched this out over 15 minutes or so but there's no reason why you shouldn't be up and running within two or three minutes if you go to 1403 um, let's see it again 1403.bitnet.systems sign up validate the uh, email download the agent for your platform uh, copy and paste the config yaml into your directory start the um, the the, the the binary that connects or compile it yourself of course if you want connect to your hercules and make sure that you print to class a and that's it now one problem that you'll also see is uh, we see it right here is that um, there is a resource measurement facility uh, active within mvs 
uh, TK4, which is MF1. MF1 is the predecessor of the RMF resource measurement facility for ZOS, etc. Um, and I think it became RMF with MBS XA or ESA, I'm not too sure anymore. And it just every half an hour or so it prints a you know report on the performance, and I and it goes by default to class A. Also, when you shut down the mainframe gracefully, it will also print out some stuff to class A. So I like to disable all that and just say uh, stop MF1. I think that the, the way I I handle it is that I actually create in just to a whole new output class which I call uh, P for uh, 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 printer 1403 and I only get the P connected to the uh, to a new main to a new printer so uh, there's no reason why we only need one printer uh, we can also add a, a second 1403 printer and that's what I do I add yet another printer and then make that class P in JS2 and then I know that only class P output will be emailed to me um, or you can call it whatever you want to call it um, uh, but I think it's a little beyond the scope of this video how to configure an additional printer in JS2. Maybe I'll make a separate video about all of that so that we can connect in that new video somehow to the virtual 1403 uh, service that we have running. That's it. So um, uh, I'm going to show the output again for our enjoyment. Um, as you can see here, and this is all done, by the way, by Matthew Wilson. So uh, we discussed this at length over over many hours how to make this look amazing uh, we bought the font uh, or i bought the font uh, we debated at length where uh, on real listings where the output starts and we realized that it starts on this line above i looked at uh, dozens of uh, uh, listings from the 80s on real 1403 uh, printer for for the for all the uh, operating systems out there and um, and uh, and until we got it to the point where it is today here where you see it has the line count uh, at different measures on the right and on the left we have the alignment artifacts we have here another alignment artifact here we have the branding uh, there's a lot that goes into that and all this is is in a way hand drawn um, by matthew with commands to the pdf uh, uh, renderer so it's really uh, painstaking work, detailed work to make it look as amazing as it is here and so I hope you will enjoy uh, having such beautiful output uh, with the original font I hope you will enjoy getting this all for free as a service to the mainframe enthusiast community and, uh, and uh, I thank Matthew Wilson very much for all his hard work and for the excellent cooperation we've had over the last couple of months on this and we're very excited to announce the service and make it available to you as of today thank you for watching if you like what we've done here please press on the like button please share with your friends and uh, and enjoy printing thank you and goodbye